Hello students, today I wanted to go over a problem using the law of universal gravitation. And so what I'd like to do is go ahead and read the problem to you. We're going to make some calculations and then we are going to graph our answers. So let's go ahead and get started. On the graph below, plot the gravitational force between the two spheres. The two spheres are initially three meters apart and this is a center to center distance and slowly moved away from each other. The first sphere has a mass of 38 kilograms and the second sphere has a mass of 28 kilograms. So like I mentioned, we're going to use the law of universal gravitation. So the equation is F, which is the force of gravitational attraction between the two objects. This is going to be the gravitational constant times mass A times mass B divided by the center to center distance squared, okay? And so what we have, G, our constant, is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, and we have units of Newton meters squared per kilogram squared, okay? So the problem tells us that the, the spheres are three meters apart, center to center, uh, one mass is 28 kilograms and the other mass is 38 kilograms. So let's go ahead and plug in some values here. We're calculating the force of gravitational attraction. So we're going to use our universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. We're going to multiply this by mass A, which is 38 kilograms. And then mass B, which is 28 kilograms. Austin, go ahead and grab some cookies off the table there, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, we are going to divide this by the center to center distance squared, identified by R. So it starts out at a position of three meters, and we are going to square that value. So let's take out our trusty calculator here. We're going to take the product of these three values here in the numerator. And in my numerator, I'm going to have a value 7.09688 times 10 to the negative 8th. So I'm putting this in scientific notation since the number is so small in the numerator. Now I want to talk about units here. We have a kilogram times a kilogram. This is going to give us kilogram squared. So the units that I have in the numerator, we have Newton meter squared per kilogram squared times, we have kilogram times a kilogram, so kilogram squared this is going to be in the numerator. I have kilograms squared here in the numerator and kilograms squared in the denominator. So those units will cancel out, leaving us with units of Newton meters squared. Excuse me, Mr. D. Yes. I have my portfolio here for you. Okay. Did you create a table of contents? Yes, I did. Excellent. Hey, just leave it right there and I'll take care of it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Have a Merry Christmas. You too. Thank you, sir. Okay, so in my denominator, we are going to square three meters. So not only are we squaring the numerical value, we are also squaring the unit value. So this is going to give me nine meters squared. Now, taking a look at the units here, I've got meters squared here, meters squared here. Those will cancel out, leaving us with units of newtons, okay? So we have this value that we are going to divide by nine. And this is going to give me 7.885 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. Okay, so what let's do, let's transfer this value into our table here. So this is a T-chart basically. So we know in a T-chart we have X in the left-hand column and y in the right-hand column. So our independent variable is in the left-hand column. Our dependent variable is in the right-hand column. Our position is three meters. Gravitational force, 7.885 times 10 
to the negative ninth newtons. Okay? All right. So now we need to calculate the gravitational force of attraction between the two spheres for four, five, six, seven, and eight meters apart. Now this is the center to center distance. Okay. Now, one thing that I would like to recommend is to create an algorithm. And an algorithm is just a mathematical shortcut to an answer. And what we can do, instead of us going through here each time and saying universal gravitational constant here, times mass A times mass B every time, it doesn't change. Those three values are constant. Uh, when we're calculating the gravitational attraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with an algorithm and we are going to keep our numerator and we're going to divide it by r squared. So my algorithm is going to be force of gravitational attraction is equal to 7.096 Eight, eight, and we're going to have units of newton meters squared. So times 10 to the negative 8 newton meters squared divided by r squared. Okay, that's going to be our algorithm that we use for the remaining calculations. So let's go ahead and erase this. Okay, now let's calculate the force of gravitational attraction for four meters. So what I have is F is equal to, we're using the algorithm, 7.09688 times 10 to the negative eight newton meters squared divided by, so our center to center distance is four, so four meters squared is going to be 16 meters squared, okay? So what we have is four point four three five times ten to the negative ninth newtons. Okay? So what we're going to do, and this is for 4 meters, so I'm going to use a subscript here to identify 4 meters, okay? So, force of gravitational attraction at 5 meters, 7.09688 times 10 to the negative 8 newton meters squared divided by 5 meters, and that value is going to be squared, so that's going to give us 25 meters squared. Let's take a look at the units here. So in my numerator, I have meters squared. In my denominator, I have meters squared. Those guys will cancel. We're going to divide this by 25 meters squared. This gives us 2.8387 times 10 to the negative ninth, and we're left with units of newtons right here. So we can calculate the force of gravitational attraction center to center six meters. So remember, we're using our algorithm here. We have six meters, and that value is squared in the denominator. So remember, what we're working with here is an inverse square relationship. So 6 meters, value squared is going to be 36 meters squared. Our units of meters squared will cancel. Okay. And that's going to give us 1.971 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons, okay? Then for seven, at seven meters, we know seven meters squared, that's gonna be 49 meters squared. And in our denominator, 
times 10 to the negative 8 newton meters squared. The units of meters squared, once again, will cancel. And now we have 1.443, I'm sorry, 1.4483 times 10 to the negative 9. And then let's do the force at 8 meters. Okay. All right. And then we've got 64 meters squared. Okay. So I've got... One point one zero eight times ten to the negative ninth. Now, what we need to do is plot our values on our graph here. And as you can see, I've titled the graph "Gravitational Force Between Two Spheres." Once again, our independent variable is the position of those spheres, and the dependent variable is the force of gravitational attraction between the two spheres. So. The gravitational force depends upon the position, how far away the objects are center to center. So at three meters, I have 7.885. So I'm somewhere up here. And then at four, I've got 4.435 times 10 to the negative ninth. Then at five, 2.8387. At six, 1.97. At seven, 1.448. And finally, our last ordered pair is going to be at a position of eight meters and 1.108 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons, okay? So as you can see, we do not have a linear relationship. We have an inverse square relationship. And so what let's do is let's create a line of best fit using a dashed line here. Okay, and so if we were to describe the relationship, we would have an inverse square relationship between the gravitational force and the distance, center to center distance between the spheres. And if we were to describe the shape of our graph, we have a hyperbola, okay? So I hope this has helped you today. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me over Canvas or send me an email or give me a phone call in my office. But I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.